Hello, this is Matt Slick from the Matt Slick Live podcast, where I defend the Christian faith and lay out our foundations of the truth of God's Word. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it, share it, but most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Coming to you from an entrenched barricade deep in the heart of Central North Carolina. Masculine Journey After Hours. A time to go deeper and be more transparent on the topic covered on this week's broadcast. So sit back and join us on this adventure. The Masculine Journey After Hours starts here now. Welcome to Masculine Journey After Hours. We're glad that you're with us today and we have a interesting topic that we're talking about. It's kind of all over the place right now, and so we're going to continue that. But Art, won't you tell us a little bit about your topic that we're uh, talking about today? Okay, well, it's my fault. This is my topic. Uh, we're blaming you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so this this uh, idea came to me for, uh, last week from uh, listening to the song that Sam had submitted as uh, as his bump last week, as a, as a, as a topic last week. And what I got out of it was that the the singer was just uh, living. In misery, he uh, he didn't know who would be if he was happy, and uh, he talks about being obsessed and stressed about little things. And he's uh, it's been two years since he's talked to God, and he's praying to God now. But it's been for two years he didn't, and you know the the idea came to me. You know how 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 are we walking with God and working on our self care and. Uh, our, our own well-being and uh, our, our health and happiness and well-being and, and spiritual well-being as well. And, and also the, this two-year time, time uh, absence that he, uh, that the singer um, experienced, that, that kind of struck me too as, as having a, introducing a time component to this topic as, as in, you know, we don't have a, uh, our time here uh, on earth is is very short and uh, most of us guys here we can uh, feel comfortable measuring time and and measuring our past in decades or even scores and um, but uh, so that that is the topic what are, what are we uh, uh, how um, how are we walking with God and and working on self-care and uh, and there is a, a immediacy to it there is, there is. So you yeah. shared in the uh, first show just a little bit about what you do outside of the studio to kind of take care of your heart. Do you want to share with that a little again, a little bit again? There, Art, you spend some time well, with yeah, your two uh, other favorite people, yeah. or two other favorite creatures, <laughs> I should say. Yeah, I was going to say I like to spend a lot of time with my dog. You know, the days are days are a lot shorter now. I, I come in earlier and uh, like to sit on the back porch with my dogs and maybe listen to some music. I mean, that's something that that's. Uh, uh, time to myself, time to uh, reflect on things, time to clear my mind of problems and and cares, and uh, and to be, just to be closer to God, and that that's uh, that that helps me, and and I would I would encourage anyone else, you know, whatever it is that you like to do, to you know, make time to do it, um, uh, whether it's go fishing or or uh, whatever interest you may have. Um, but uh, do the things that you enjoy doing that, that help you and that help you to uh, heal and become a better person because uh, yeah, soon soon we will be uh, uh, out of time here, essentially. Yeah. yeah, we'll be fertilizing daisies. Isn't that what, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> isn't that what Robin Williams said in the first clip from uh-huh. or the clip from the last show? Yeah. Yeah, so we'd be doing that. So, Rodney, you actually have the uh, first clip of the uh, second show. So, congratulations, you've moved oh, up. Oh <laughs> boy, I'm really coming up there now. Yeah, yeah, you got you got Andy in. Yeah, and he bolted. Yeah, well, I get I put him in so he would leave. <laughs> He's not here to hear that. So he'll exactly, hear it on the show. he'll hear it later. Yeah, he'll hear it later. Yeah, yeah, I I knew that. Uh, I could find something from the Carol Burnett show and what, you know, they do that skit for mama's family. I knew I could find something on Eunice with self care and stuff. Cause she's always, what about me? What about me? And always arguing with mama. And I stumbled across a skit that I had not seen before called the psychiatrist. It, I love to play the whole thing cause it's just so hilarious. But what happens is that 
finally Eunice goes to see a psychiatrist. It's funny how Carbonet even introduces it on the show. You know, it's like, we finally did something we should have done a long time ago. We sent Eunice to the psychiatrist. <laughs> and so this is her second visit. The first visit, basically, yeah. the psychiatrist saying, well, you need to get a job. You know, you need to take control of your life and get a job. And she's back reporting that, oh, no, she really didn't do anything on that. And he suggested, well, bring Mama along. So in this session, Mama's in the session for a long time. And then at the end, Mama's all upset and says, I'm not, this is stupid. I'm getting out of here. So she walks out. And then you've got this interaction where he's trying his last ditch effort to try to get Eunice to really focus and start to do some I would say self-care, so you can go ahead and play it. Now listen, I have a news flash for you. It's not that old bag out there that you're having trouble with. It's Eunice. You are furious with Eunice because Eunice never finished anything that she started. It's time for you to take charge of your own life, Eunice. I could, I could if she just allow me to breathe once in a while, but Mama just won't. forget Mama. We don't care what Mama don't allow. We're going to take charge of our own life anyhow. <laughs> Work on your own self-esteem, all right? Listen. Listen, hey, I'm okay. Hey, I like me. What? You say it. Hey, I'm okay. Hey, I like me. I can't say that. Because I'm not okay. I never have liked me. Just say it. Say, I'm okay. Say it and it'll be true, I promise you, Eunice. I'm okay. Oh, louder. Come on. Say it like you really mean it. I'm okay. Say it again. I'm okay. I'm okay and you're 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 okay and mama's okay. I'm okay and you're okay and <laughs> Say it. Right on, Eunice. Now, your life will take on a golden hue just as soon as you take that first little step to the road to independence and go to that employment agency and get yourself a job. I will. I will. I will. I will. It's just a little tiny step, Eunice, but only you can do it. Hey, I like you, and I think you're okay, and I know you can do it. Oh, hey, I like me too, and I am okay. In the Christian walk, you know, it's an interesting dichotomy of submission, and yet we have responsibility to follow the Lord and do as he commands, right? So walking that fine line is awful hard in the, where I go with the self-care is more of a, well, I need to remove the plank out of my eye before I start worrying about everybody else's plank or their specks in their eye. That's one of the first things when I... You know, my BC days, I dealt with this kind of stuff with contemplating suicide for everything. That was where I really went with when things were bad, when things weren't good. It's like, okay, how am I going to do it? Plotting it all out. You know, we've had some of those discussions in the past before. And that was just kind of the normal thing. I remember when went to a psychiatrist, I guess. I don't know what, but it was for my wife and I were going to see one. And he was just kind of like talking to me, asking me about, you know, do I ever have depression? I'm like, no. Have you ever thought about suicide? Yeah. Well, then they, he honed in on that and I was like, well, that's depression. I'm like, well, no, it's not. Who doesn't think about commit, killing themselves? You know, to me, it was just, that's normal. You know, like we've talked about so many times, you're normal. You just, oh, no, that's just normal. That's just what I'm, no, that's not normal. So that was the first time I had my light turned on to that. It was just amazing how, you know, in the BC days, there's only been like two times that that thought has reoccurred and other things that, you know, you just can put off and put on Christ. And just going through that is, it's something that you, I, I can't tell anybody how to go do it and say, oh, here's the five-step plan. But when you're studying Christ and learning Christ and understanding who Christ is and he becomes more and more in your life and he's bigger and bigger. And for me, the fear of man, other people are becoming smaller. That is the great change for me to be do this what I would call the self-care because it's 
what's best for me is what God says best for me, not, not me telling myself that I'm good and mama's good and all that. It's just, no, God is good. No, none but God. Right. So as I'm trying to always worry about my plank, I'm finding that I actually care for others more in that because I'm actually like, wow, where are you at? How are you doing? Cause I know I'm not doing so well here and I'm doing better somewhere else. I'm much more open to be sympathetic and listening and trying to understand more than I am just trying to judge, which was always a problem with me. So my, my question is, why did you wait till Jim wasn't here to throw out a word like dichotomy? <laughs> well, when Jim's gone, you know, somebody's got to fill in the gap. <laughs> and we all acted like we knew what it meant. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I used it right, actually. I, I, we can't tell you if you did. Yeah. We're, we're guessing I'm, you did. <laughs> what I thought was interesting about your clip, the one time she gets authentic, he takes her right out of it. Mm. Right? When she says in, in it, you know, um, I'm not okay. And I don't usually, I don't, I don't like myself. Right. Right. When she's at the point where he can actually help her. Yeah. yeah. He does it. Nope. And that's part of the challenge is, you know, making sure when you, you go to a counselor, you get a good one. Good <laughs> that's going to lead you to God. Yeah. Right. Bob Newhart, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bob Newhart, the, the Christian version. He may have been Christian. I don't know. But no, but it's going to lead you to God. Yeah. Right. If that, yeah. if any other answer than that, if that's not where you end up, it's not going to be a lasting thing. No. Yeah, you know, and uh, there are some really, really good counselors out there, but the opposite is also true. <laughs> and so, make sure you do your due diligence before yeah. you go, because that's really what shocked me in that clip. It was a very funny clip, but at the point when she was actually ready, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he just took her to a completely different direction. That was a time to put off and put on Christ. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yep. Yes. yes, exactly, exactly. Well, Harold, I want to ask you a question. You had something uh, you talked about where. Uh, you've learned some stuff about stress. You told us a little bit about that before the uh, the show. Yeah, that was uh, when we were listening to the thing about stress affecting sleep. And, and I said, yeah, it really does, because I was listening to the radio one time, and Smokey Bear said, only you can prevent forest fires. Stress me to the max. <laughs> I just couldn't get any sleep after that. It's too big a job. That was Smokey the Cub back in those days, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was scores. Sorry, just well, thank you, Harold. We'll come back to you here in a second. But uh, I guess we're, we're stuck with my clip now. And so I went in a totally different direction than I think everybody else. And, and, and so I actually have a, a clip from a um, news report on the uh, importance of sleep. And so I want to go ahead and play that. Uh, We'll come back and talk about it and uh, the reason I chose it. And so we'll go from there. The problem is so pervasive, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention considers insufficient sleep a public health epidemic, one that can have surprising consequences on your health. Just because they can get by with four or five hours sleep, it may not be best for them. And it is pretty clear that not getting enough sleep on a nightly basis can lead to health problems. Health problems such as hypertension, heart attack, stroke, diminished blood sugar control, possibly leading to diabetes, weight gain, anxiety, and depression. So how much sleep do we need? The National Sleep Foundation says children need between 9 and 10 hours of sleep each night, adults 7 to 8. But in a 2009 CDC survey, about 35% of adults reported getting less than 7 hours of sleep a night with nearly 40% reporting at least one incident of nodding off during the day, and even more disturbing, about 5% reported nodding off at least once while driving. A frightening number, since the U.S. Department of Transportation estimates more than 1,500 Americans are killed each year because of drowsy driving. So how can we get more sleep? By changing some habits. First, watch the caffeine intake, none after 1 or 2 p.m. Second, take time before bed to wind down. And third, stop the screen time well before bedtime. When you get light from whether it's a TV screen or a mobile phone screen, it sort of sends a message to say, hey, it's not time for sleeping. And finally, start looking at sleep for what it is, as important to our good health as exercise and proper nutrition. We should be spending a third of our life sleeping, and when we deprive ourselves of that, we're really limiting our opportunities for good health. And don't forget, besides enhanced productivity and better health, 
there's one more very important benefit to getting enough sleep. When we're well rested, we tend to be nicer to each other. I left that last part in there as a reminder to myself more than anything that uh, when we get enough sleep, we're, we're nicer to one another because I realized years and years ago that my kids were often the victim of my lack of sleep. Uh, when I was married, it was my spouse was a victim of my lack of sleep that, you know, I could I could have tolerance with lots of people or apparent tolerance, <laughs> not necessarily tolerance, but what it would appear to be tolerance with lots of people until it was somebody really close to me. You know, and the more tired I was, you know, the, the less capacity I had for anything outside of uh, what I consider to be a norm, you know. And uh, so, you know, I've learned that um, if I don't get enough sleep, there's not a mouse that's safe as far as not, <laughs> not like squeaky mice that eat cheese, the mice you use on your computer. Because when things aren't going well on the computer, sometimes I take it out on the mouse. I know you guys would be surprised about that. You've only seen that once at boot camp. Mm. But uh, yeah, I uh, had to replace a mouse last week <laughs> because uh, I couldn't load something to Teams that I wanted to load, and, and the mouse was a victim. But really, the issue was uh, I was the victim of not having enough sleep. And, and so in this season, and I do a lot better in the fall, with it, honestly, because of Sunday football. Mm. You know, last week I went to, to church, and then after church, you know, great for me that the, the uh, church service gets out in time for me to get home and watch the, the 1 o'clock game. You know, and so I got home, and I just watched football afternoon. And, and for a lot of people, that might not be relaxing, but I find it very relaxing and, and very good time that I, I work all week very diligently to, to guard my Sundays. Yeah. You know, and it's not as much about the football as it is the, the practice of rest, Mm-hmm. You know, and it's more than just a physical rest, it's a mental rest. You know, we live in a society where we're rarely disconnected. You know, most people have a phone with them a lot of the time, or they're listening to something, or watching something, or they've got an AirPod in, or something that, that keeps them connected. You know, and the problem with that connection, although there's a lot of benefits to it, is your mind doesn't get time to rest. You don't get a time to take a break, and you just mentally wear down more and more and more. And more. And this was a reminder for me of, yeah, your rest is important. I was watching football last night. You know, uh, there was a game on last night, and I really wanted to see the end of the game. But I was like, if I do that, I'm not going to get enough sleep. And so, you know, I I made myself go to bed, and I was grateful for that today. You guys should be a little bit more grateful (laughs) (laughs) that I went to bed because I would have been a lot less nice than I am now, Mm -hmm. believe it or not. But uh, no, it's just very important to me. And so some of the questions I'm going to ask you here in a minute, I know Kenny wants to say something, but is what are you doing to take care of yourself right, right now? That's right? Because right. I, I know, you know, Art, you answered it, and Robbie, you answered it some, but I'm asking you to answer it again. But what are you specifically doing to take care of yourself? But before yeah. we do that, Kenny, you want to say something? Well, I was just listening to that clip, you know, eight hours. Mm-hmm. That's what they recommend. Ten for the kids, so there's two hours. It should be a little quiet in the house. Sometimes that happens with you got multiple kids and all. But that, that importance, like we're getting that, really taking care of itself because uh, if you don't take care of it now, you, you can't go back and catch up because I've seen people try to do that. I've seen people uh, spend their lives making a wealth and then they're trying to take that wealth and buy that and you can't buy it back. I mean, once God gives you something, you got to take care of it. It's a gift. You're stewards. Do we see ourselves stewards? And time is very precious. Really, the, one of the most precious qual- things he gives us to use. You know, he, he says, "Number your days." You know, we all got the same amount of hours, and do we discipline ourselves in that? And I know I struggle with that myself. Mm-hmm. Staying focused on, like you say, I want to see the end of this, but it's not good for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can catch the end later and all. That's, that's basically. Yeah, I find that, you know, for me, I'm a, a project person. I love to do projects, and I get a lot of enjoyment out of completing projects. But the problem with that, if I'm not careful and I don't make myself rest, on my days off, I will do projects the whole time. And I may be glad that the garage got cleaned or the backyard, got, this got done, but I don't take time to, to sit in the backyard and enjoy it because I spend all my time doing projects. Right? And I still enjoy doing the projects, but I'm just trying to do those on Saturdays and giving my Sundays more to family time, you know, football, friends, anything that's going to bring me joy and relaxation instead of more to do type thing. Harold? 
some of us are born uh, night owls, and the world is ruled by larks, so we don't fit. Uh, but also, to me, uh, I made the mistake years ago of not only being a night owl, but I, I tended to take great pride in the fact that I could stay up, and there were times that I worked all night long because of a computer bug, and uh, I, I, God gave me the ability that when the phone rang at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning, I could jump up, drive to the office, and be clear-headed enough to, to solve the, the bug in the program, even if it was one I hadn't written. But my mistake was that I, I took pride in that, and I resented sleeping. I wanted to be doing something. I wanted to read. Uh, and I remember as a child, I would sneak a flashlight into the bed with me so I could read after Mama turned the lights out. And, but that's not really good for your health. When you start through that list of things that you can have, like high blood pressure, heart trouble, I'm sitting here and I'm like, <laughs> Bill Murray, me, <laughs> me. Uh, so, yeah, the Lord has blessed me with uh, many years. I'm, I'm past 82 now. Never thought about it being here at that age, and uh, who knows? Uh, I'm I'm gaining on Vinny. I don't know if I'm. Uh, can, uh, Vinny was apparently around 85 when he was still on the program. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot for that. <laughs> who knows if I'll make it? <laughs> but we we need to it. we need to take better care of ourselves. There's no doubt about that. And I didn't do it very well. well lack of sleep also leads to short temper. Mm -hmm. anger so it's uh you go into a downward spiral you do you do you know we started these fires here at you know masculine journey and so i had a fire in ashboro a couple of weeks ago had one in our neighborhood well that was three weeks ago in ashboro that two weeks ago we had it in in stokesdale which again those fires at six o'clock you can see them at the website at you know fires under welded heart but you know, we started going around asking guys, you know, that hadn't come to a boot camp and that kind of thing, you know, how do you feel about certain things? And you could see that these guys had not really taken any kind of inventory. I mean, they were running like I was when I was 30. You know, like you said, you took pride that if you were hurting, you powered through it. Right. If, if, if you were hurting emotionally, if you were hurting physical, you know, the, the, all those things didn't matter because the goal, you know, this was this is where we're headed and this way. And so I, it was amazing to me. But we talked about that. I watched these people for the first time get the concept of, oh, I got to put the oxygen mask on myself first. Right. I'm telling other people to get Jesus. But I, I haven't gone to Jesus to help me with all the other struggles that I have in my life because I'm honestly not aware of all the struggles I have in my life because I haven't sat down to see how I even feel. And, and so I think it's one of the places and one of the things I really got from um, walking with you guys over the years of certainly Sam and Darren is to actually, well, how are you feeling, Robbie? Like, how are you really feeling? Em emotionally, physically, all those things really you know, mattered to God and, and that body he gave you, you know, I heard it said recently, I think it's beautiful that Jesus was fully human. And so to be human is the ultimate honor, right? To, 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 to take advantage of this unbelievable body that God gave you and, and, and treat it like it ought to be treated so that you can have you know, 90 years or whatever Vinny would might have had or we'll, we'll all shoot for, you know? Yeah, and I'm going to ask you a question again, though. So there are things that you do for self-care. I mean, you are riding a bike for a while, you take walks. I mean, there's different things. So what's God got you doing in this season to help take care of yourself? <laughs> well, you, you know, I've, I've been on very interesting nutrition. I actually, I pray before I eat anything. Mm -hmm. And, and ask God, you know, what are we eating today? And, and that's really, really helpful for me. Um, and I can't even believe how much better I feel. And, and same thing with my rest. So, you know, I take, those who know me well know I take a lot of naps. And, and that's also true. Like, 
Do we need to sleep? Like, it, you know, the more we can check in with God during the day on almost all the things, like, r- really, really helpful stuff. That's pretty Thank much you. it. Yeah. Okay. Danny, what about you? I've been trying to take a nap every afternoon, but the boss keeps kicking the chair and yelling. I don't understand what the deal is. But the, no, actually, I tried to lose some weight lately, and you know, working out some, and trying to take better care of me all around, not just physically. So, yeah, definitely. Rodney, you got anything you want to add? Yeah, on the physical side, I have finally gotten back in a little bit of shape and walking and doing a very s- simple workout. Mm-hmm. You know, I did about, it would be nine years ago, I started a regiment where I actually got back in shape and it took me three years, you know, and I'm like, I actually got back in shape. I was like feeling really good, getting some strength back and running and all that kind of stuff. And I went silent again, did nothing for another f- almost six years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now I'm just starting to go back into that. But it, it does help the, the whole mental side of things as well. Um, for me, you know, definitely being in the Word and actually making sure that I'm reminding myself of who God is and who I am and being with you guys, being with other brothers and sisters at church and doing things and, you know, participating. Like I do the moving ministry, which is one of the reasons why I want to be in shape. Cause I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't help anybody else if I couldn't help myself. So just things like that, that kind of all blend together. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, for me, one of the things I've been doing is, um, I, I have some trouble with some neuropathy in my feet. And so when I get home from work at night, I don't necessarily feel like walking and I've been at work all night. So what I decided to do is I, I just parked my car first thing in the morning and I walk my job site most of the day, unless I have to go get a tool or something. That doesn't sound like much, but I'm usually getting anywhere from six to seven miles a day walking, you know, and getting those steps in because I know that if I wait till I get home, I'm going to have a hundred excuses on why I can't go do it. And it makes me do it during the day and it gives me some exercise, especially on beautiful days. Not as much fun to do it in the rain, but it is a bunch of fun to do, you know, out on nice days. So go to masculinejourney.org to register for boot camp. This is the Truth Network.